from the station working for you. This is WRTV News at Noon, streaming now. Thanks for joining us here on the News at Noon on this Friday. I'm Lauren Casey and Todd Clausen is standing by from his home this midday. And Todd, it has been a busy week here in the weather department and it keeps getting busier because we have a lot to look forward to, you could say, this weekend. <laughs> yeah, it depends how you look at it. If you're looking forward to some snow, uh, you're probably going to like the forecast. If you're not looking forward to some more rain, uh, you're probably not going to like the forecast. That's tomorrow, though, into Sunday. Today, though, I think everybody's enjoying the sunshine all across central India. And here's a live look in Bloomington. There's not a cloud in uh, the sky currently across uh, the area. Temperatures right now, they sit in the 20s. It's another chilly day for us, but we're not too far below normal. So that's the good news as we go throughout the course of the day. 31 in Lafayette, 28 in Indy, 36 right now as you make your way into the Columbus area. There's one little band of thin cloud cover out there. Uh, so some of you enjoy partly cloudy skies, but nobody's seeing any precipitation. And that is the good news going forward throughout the remainder of uh, this Friday. We'll continue to enjoy mostly sunny skies. Temperatures go up another couple degrees across uh, the area. And then this evening, if you have plans on Friday night, you are just fine with clear skies. Tomorrow, a winter storm watch will be replaced by either a winter storm warning or winter weather advisories across central Indiana. The watch in place right now across the northern half of the state as rain, sleet, and snow heads our way. We'll break it all down for you in detail coming up in Maine Weather, Lauren, in just a couple of minutes. All right. Todd, thank you so much. So police are still investigating an overnight shooting that left one person dead on the northeast side of Indianapolis. It happened around 3.30 this morning near 42nd Street and Brentwood Drive. That's just east of Post Road. Now, according to IMPD, one person was shot and died at the scene. Officers have not released additional details at this time. The housing complex where today's shooting happened is the same one where six deadly shootings took place within the span of seven months last year. Those shootings do not appear to be connected to each other, and they happened between June and November of 2020. They included the shooting death of a woman last August who police say was killed by a private security guard. Authorities say Melvin Hall had been hired by the housing complex to work security following previous shootings there. Now, Metro Police detectives are also looking for surveillance video to help with a shooting investigation involving two men and a police officer. Investigators say the Metro Police officer was stopped at 30th and Shadeland on the northeast side around 1 o'clock Thursday afternoon. That's when two men got out of their cars and began shooting at each other. The officer, who was not in uniform or marked IMPD cruiser, then returned fire. Police say it's unclear if he had shot either of the men. I will tell you that the officer was in plain clothes in an unmarked police car, in an uh, undercover police car. There is no dash cam video. There is no body cam video. The officer was working in plain clothes, and our plain clothes officers do not uh, utilize body cams. So shortly after the shooting, police say a gunshot victim was found on 34th Street and another showed up at a hospital. Detectives believe their injuries were connected to the shooting, but they're still working to confirm all the details. The latest coronavirus numbers from the state health department show new cases holding mostly steady. More than 2,600 new cases were reported by the department today. That's slightly lower than Thursday's report. 46 additional COVID-related deaths were also reported today. That raises Indiana's total death toll to 9,549. Almost 16,000 more Hoosiers have received their first dose of a COVID-19 vaccine over the past 24 hours. That brings the total number to almost 519,000 in our state. More than 127,000 people in Indiana have gotten both doses of a coronavirus shot. A battle over the pandemic powers held by the governor and an election bill that seemed to stem directly from last year's race for the office. Our race still takes an inside look at those two highlights from last week's work by the legislature in today's State House Roundup. The State House essentially had a giant closed for business sign on it last week, but now it's back to the questions of how lawmakers will get along after they clock back in for work. Hello, Ralph. There are some within his own political party who think Governor Holcomb has too much pandemic power. They're especially mad about the mask mandate and limits on the number of people inside businesses and houses of worship, even though masks and social distancing are backed by science. 
This week, Republican Representative Bob Morris introduced a bill that would take crowd-limiting authority away from the governor and the state health department. It goes much farther than a similar bill from State House Majority Leader Matt Lehman. Lehman's bill would leave the power with the governor, but it would require the legislature to approve any emergency orders that last more than 60 days. Republicans in the legislature also are taking aim at someone who almost caused a pandemic pushback political predicament. A bill in the House would make it more difficult for third-party candidates to get on the election ballots. It would require those candidates to get a whole lot more signatures on petitions from registered voters than is currently required. They might as well call this bill the Donald Rainwater Act of 2021. Rainwater was the libertarian candidate who took advantage of conservative outrage over masks and other pandemic restrictions and picked up more than 11% of the vote in the governor's race last year. That could have caused trouble for Governor Holcomb had his race with Democrat Woody Myers been closer. Now, Republican lawmakers seem to be trying to head off another potential political pickle when the relatively popular governor will not be on the ballot in 2024. Working for you with State House Roundup, Ray Steele, WRTV. Ray, thank you. So he's out of politics for now, but what about the future? And how will his ties to his former boss help him or hurt him? Next, our own political insiders ponder Pence's fate. Let's take a look at our forecast with Todd. And Lauren, as we go throughout today, no weather related issues at all. The sun is shining across central Indiana. It changes tomorrow as our next winter storm approaches. It'll bring accumulating snow to just parts of the area. Not everybody is going to be seeing snow with this storm system. You can see right there the areas that do have the potential. We'll break it all down for you coming up when the news at noon continues right here on WRTV. Welcome back. Now that his term as our vice president is over, people who watch politics are wondering about Mike Pence. There are reports that he and his wife Karen don't yet have a permanent place to call home as of now. Today, our political insiders take a look at what comes next for the former Indiana governor. As more time passes, the Trump-Pence administration is going to age really poorly and that's even including in states like Indiana. And it's because once we're out of this uh, partisan grip that is slowly starting to, you know, chip away, we're finally starting to, you know, I, I actually genuinely believe in the calls for unity that Republicans and Democrats are wanting to accomplish. A lot of Hoosiers are gonna realize that the last four years were actually pretty toxic, not, uh, actually uh, geared towards our American values, which is to protect democracy and to abide by the Constitution. And so I think when it comes to Pence, unfortunately, I just think it means that his future is rather uh, stunted and it's gonna be a rather small audience, um, but that audience is his core base. And so uh, he will be successful to a degree, uh, but I, when it comes to national politics and running for president, I do not see how he uh, becomes successful. Uh, I wrote uh, in my cheat sheet uh, gossip column that you can find any politics at org, by the way, just FYI, uh, that the vice president is probably uh, has got a book deal uh, in the works, write a book about his time um, in the Trump administration, as well as governor of Indiana. But also I'm hearing that he may go back into the radio business as a talk radio show host, uh, take it over for Rush Limbaugh, uh, which would make sense because Mike does have a, you know, used to work at WIBC, Ray, just like, you know, I do and you used to. He's got the talk radio background. Uh, Rush Limbaugh has an audience uh, that fits, you know, sort of that Donald Trump uh, sphere of influence. And it gives him a couple years to, to sort of rebuild and rebrand uh, himself again and run for, and possibly run for president. I mean, you also gotta remember, Drew, that Joe Biden ran for president twice. You know, didn't get it then the third time was a charm. So you, you can't necessarily rule out uh, Mike Pence right away. Our thanks to our political insiders. So the vaccine is slowly being rolled out, but some people are choosing not to get the shot. Next, how one man is on a mission to see that people who look like him are not scared of these shots. Let's take a live look outside right now. This is our tower camera here. You can see those light clouds up ahead and we have a winter storm on the way. So Todd Clausen is gonna break that down for us, what you can expect for your weekend. It's all coming up right here on the News at Noon. Stick around.
Welcome back. The number of Hoosiers getting the COVID vaccine is slowly going up, but so far the state says the rate of vaccination among African Americans is much lower than other demographic groups. Our own Cornelius Hawker spoke with a man who hopes to change that as he also tries to change assumptions about the vaccine. Christopher Randolph's message is crystal clear. African Americans go take the shot. He understands some African Americans don't trust the healthcare system because of things that have happened in the past, like the Tuskegee syphilis experiment. But Christopher thinks the black community needs to put the pandemic into perspective. I think it's important that we ascertain that this is a different time and it's a, it's a different situation. Conspiracies are always going to be there. So that's, that's my thing. I, I'm a conspiracy buster. Numbers from the state show African Americans make up just under 4% of all the vaccinations that have been given out in Indiana, while making up 10% of the state's population. That's something Christopher hopes he can help change by telling his story. He's received both shots because of his job as a chaplain at a local hospital. Being in that job really showed him why getting vaccinated was so important. I'm a chaplain, so I'm right there at the critical time. I've, I've never seen anything like this in my life. I've been in three combat wars. I have not seen as many deaths. Christopher has also seen the impact of COVID in his personal life. His wife, Carmen, dealt with COVID-19 back in the spring, and she's still dealing with some of the side effects. I get sad by just um, seeing how uh, it affected her when she had it. So, and so my wife was like just laying around for, for weeks. And that was hard, you know, in itself, you know, to see it. From his personal experiences through his job and with his wife, Christopher hopes he can help convince his community to get vaccinated, ask questions if they have any, and make sure they realize what could happen if they don't take the steps to protect themselves. See, this is the thing. It's deadly. It's deadly. Working for you, Cornelius Hawker, WRTV. Cornelius, thank you. So early in the pandemic, officials in Marion County worked to place COVID testing sites in predominantly black neighborhoods. We reached out to see if the department is doing the same for vaccine access. They said that right now their efforts are focused on education and making sure there's an understanding about the, what the vaccine is and the benefit it provides. Let's take a turn right now to our forecast and toss things over to Todd, who's at home monitoring a lot going on in the weather department. Todd, what do we need to know? Yeah, there's a lot going on over the course of the weekend, Lauren, so we'll dive right into it. We'll kind of get today out of the way first because your Friday is completely quiet. As you see right here, we have just a few high fair weather clouds out there right now as you look from downtown to the north and temperatures that currently sit in the upper 20s uh, to the low 30s. So it's cool outside, uh, but not terrible by January standards. And there's just a little bit in the way of cloud cover as you look uh, across the central Indiana. And those are the clouds that you saw on our tower cam looking uh, to the north, but they're not really going to impede the sunshine uh, much at all. And throughout the remainder of the day, temperatures will climb another couple degrees uh, and into the low to mid 30s. And then we'll start to cool off. If you have Friday evening plans, uh, you are going to be just fine in this forecast. Things start to get interesting tomorrow afternoon and evening. The first half of your day on Saturday is quiet. It's mostly cloudy. Get outside, do whatever you want to do, and you'll be just fine. Then the storm system is going to come in. To the north, you see the blue color. That's it's mainly snow, pretty high confidence in that. As you work your way along I-74 and I-70 in that pink color through the central portion of the state, I have a very low confidence in this forecast in that general region uh, because that's where the rain snow line is going to set up. And to the south, Bloomington, Seymour, Greensburg, you start off with brief, briefly some snow and then you go over to all rain, very confident in that part of the forecast. I'm going to show you two computer models. This is the first one. This one is a little bit colder. It brings in a good burst of snow tomorrow evening by 7, 8 o'clock. And this band that you see here is pretty intense. That's probably about a one inch to two inch band of snow per hour moving through the area. So I do think everybody kind of gets a good coating of snow on the onset of this storm system with the exception of locations down to the south where you can 
UNC uh, Bloomington over to Seymour. With this computer model, the mixed band of precipitation stays a little further to the south than the one I'm going to show you all the way into early Sunday morning. Now this computer model, you'll see that the rain and snow line comes north a lot quicker. Still a burst of snow at the onset of the storm system, but then we change over to more in the way of rain. The exception is here, Peru over towards Muncie and into the Richmond area. So I think I rely on this computer model a little bit better. It's handled storms better so far this winter. Uh, and then on Sunday, everybody's kind of dealing with just rain. So most of the snow is tomorrow night into early Sunday morning. One to three inches across the central portion of the state, an inch or less to the south, three to six inches to the north. Here's the thing now. It's going to be tough to measure as we go into the day on Sunday when you wake up because at that point, most of the area has moved into more of a rain event. So that's going to help to melt the snow away. It's going to become a little more slushy. And uh, this computer model kind of picks up on that as well, putting what I thought on average about one to three across the middle portion of the state with those higher totals and a shovelable snow for those of you in Logansport, Tipton, over into the Muncie area as well. You're going to see the most snow even over to Richmond. It's just kind of a sloppy storm system uh, and that's the way it's going to be not only with this storm system but at the end of your seven day planning forecast you notice I have another storm on Thursday that one looks to be about the same thing so it's a very active weather pattern and of course uh, Kyle and Kevin Lauren will have the latest on uh, tomorrow's storm coming up tonight at 5, 6, 7 and a little 6 and 11 o'clock. All right, Todd, thank you so much. So the Rebound Indiana is our commitment to guiding you to resources, helping you bounce back from this pandemic. And today our own Kelsey Anderson is talking with experts to help you figure out if, if you're in a familiar financial rut and having too much money on your credit cards. Well, financial freedom is possible even in these trying times. So if you have a pile of credit card debt, we have some easy tips for you that you can take right now to cut that down and get back on track. Financial professional Logan Benham of Benham Advisory Group says the best way to get out of debt is to write out your expenses and see where you can cut back in your day to day life to put more money towards paying off your credit cards. If you have multiple cards, he suggests paying off your smallest credit card balance first to start yourself off on the right foot. Start by paying off the smallest one first. That way you might be able to eliminate carrying a balance over from month to month and that might motivate you to tackle some of those larger debts. He believes once you've completed paying off one credit card, you'll be motivated to put more towards your balance and be debt free a lot sooner. But remember, saving and getting out of debt is a marathon and not a sprint, and it is not going to happen overnight. For more financial advice from Logan Benham, head over to this story on the WRTV News app. Working for you, Kelsey Anderson, WRTV. Kelsey, thank you. So coming up today, it's a special day for us here at WRTV as we're working to promote reading to young children. Next, we'll show you how we're reading to kids still in this pandemic. We'll be right back. Welcome back. So WRTV is dedicated to helping with childhood literacy here in central Indiana. You may remember last week we, with your help, donated thousands of books to students in Martinsville. And this evening we're continuing that effort by reading some books to kids. Now due to the pandemic, we can't do our normal in-person reading, so we're doing it on Facebook. People, peace. Can you say peace? <laughs> peace. <laughs> <laughs> Inspire others to do the same. Look at all the other people with their signs. Yeah, sometimes you'll say something and no one will be listening, but keep saying what is in your heart and you'll find someone who listens. Look, the little bird's listening to her. Tweet, tweet. So this is part of me videotaping myself reading a book to Archie, my son. It's called Say Something, and Raphael is going to read a little bit of the book. Amanda Starantino is going to read some of the book, and it's going to be posted on our Facebook page tonight. So after dinner, grab your kids and join us for a little read-along. It's a lot of fun, Todd. All right. Looks very fun there, Lauren. And Archie's just chowing down on that apple there. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> we had a bribe him a little. Older. He won't like the fruit and vegetables as much if it's anything <laughs> like my nephews. <laughs> All right. Here are your snowfall totals. Not tonight, not tomorrow morning. It's a Saturday night into Sunday. Be prepared for a very sloppy Saturday night into Sunday morning. morning. All right. Thanks for joining us here and have a great weekend.